the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, the United States has committed to providing essential support to strengthen Sri Lanka's economy. US President Joe Biden has written to President Sisanayake calling for enhanced cooperation between the two countries. Central Bank Governor Dr. Nandalal Virasinghe said the CBSL has issued necessary recommendations on the import of vehicles in such a way that there is no obstruction to Sri Lanka's foreign reserves. The Colombo Stock Exchange has seen a decline in performance today despite the ASPI maintaining itself above 12000 points both indices closed in the red today however the positive sentiment is not completely shaken and Wall Street's benchmarks finished up recouping some of the previous session's losses as investors bought back into technology stocks and investors shifted their focus to upcoming inflation data and the start of the third quarter earnings season from studio 24 Here's Anuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us. The United States has committed to providing essential support to strengthen Sri Lanka's economy. In a meeting held yesterday at the Presidential Secretary Julie Chang, the US ambassador to Sri Lanka, announced that support would be focused on fostering an export-driven economy in the country. US President Joe Biden has written to President Anwar Kumar Di Sanayake calling for enhanced cooperation between the two countries in promoting economic growth, regional security and democratic governance. Biden had written to Di Sanayake to congratulate him on his recent election victory. Biden's letter was called a significant gesture of diplomatic goodwill. In a separate statement it was said the US had also committed to providing essential support to strengthen Sri Lanka's economy. US Ambassador Julie Chang has said in a meeting that support would be focused on fostering an export-driven economy in the country. The IMF and the United States Agency for International Development are prepared to offer financial support to help enhance the economic prospects of Sri Lanka, the statement quoted Chang as saying. The US has pledged both financial and technical support for President Dissanayake's initiatives aimed at preventing fraud and corruption and has also expressed its commitment to assisting efforts for governance and ensuring the security of Sri Lanka whenever needed. Institute of Policy Studies Executive Director Dushni Virakorn said that while austerity hurts Options are limited for a middle income country in default and the more prudent course of action now would be to introduce any changes without overly disturbing the current fiscal framework also noting that debt forgiveness may be out of reach at present Speaking at the launch of the IPSS Sri Lanka State of the Economy 2024 report Virakorn said the crisis hit island nation has regained a degree of macroeconomic stability with inflation averaging about 1% year on year over the past 6 months Sri Lanka has returned to positive growth recording four quarters of consecutive positive growth but output levels remain well below 2018 and 2019 levels as projected in the IMF's growth forecast for Sri Lanka at the time even if gross domestic product growth reaches 4% by year end the threat of permanent output loss is ever present resulting in slower job growth lower living standards higher levels of poverty and persistent inequality such entrenched disparities she said will persist for a long time accordingly sri lanka has two options one is to revisit tax and government spending policies and revise them in a way that will materially alter the targets and timelines set by the imf program that's currently underway the second option is to attempt some changes at the margins of the program without disturbing the fiscal framework too much Central Bank Governor Dr. Nandalal Virasinghe has said that the CBSL has issued necessary recommendations to the Finance Ministry on the import of vehicles in such a way that there is no obstruction to Sri Lanka's foreign reserves. In 2022, Sri Lanka faced the worst economic crisis in history. At that time, then the government imposed import restrictions on more than 2000 goods including vehicles. But the restrictions were gradually relaxed, allowing several goods to be imported. Accordingly, the final relaxation should be allowed to import flow in without restriction. Accordingly, the previous government had focused on giving full permission for the import vehicles by February of next year. At a press conference held at the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, prompted from a question for the Central Bank Governor on whether there will be a change in that decision now. The governor said that he had already given the recommendations to the treasury to import vehicles in a manner that would not affect Sri Lanka's official foreign reserves. But he emphasized that the finance ministry should take decision whether to allow vehicle imports that way. 
Sri Lanka attracted 25,966 tourists from October 1st to the 6th of October 2024, indicating that the monthly arrivals are also heading for another record number. Total arrivals for 2024 has already reached 1,510,774, overrunning the total arrival figure of 1,487,303 achieved in 2023. A healthy trend was witnessed as for the first time of the year with Chinese arrivals moving to the second position with 2,437 after India, 7,749 which accounted for 29.8% of the total market. Germany slipped to the third slot while the UK was at 1,661. The central bank said Sri Lanka's foreign exchange revenue from tourism rose to $181 million in September, rising 18.9% compared to the same month last year. The the revenue in September last year was $152.2 million. The revenue in the first nine months of 2024 have jumped 61.2% to $2.35 billion compared to $1.46 billion in the same period last year. However, with the winter season beginning in a few weeks, European markets are expected to dominate the arrivals and take the country to register the best year for arrivals, erasing the previous best achieved in 2018. Many say that the current crisis in the Gulf would not have have a major negative impact for local tourism as they have not seen any cancellations. The plantation sector workers will receive their long-awaited revised daily minimum wage of 1,350 rupees, along with an additional allowance of 50 rupees for each extra kilo of harvest from the 10th of October. The move follows recent negotiations between regional plantation companies, trade unions and wages board culminating in an agreement with the state sector wage control council at the labor department. The 1350 rupees basic wage excludes contributions to the employees provided fund and employees trust fund but with those added workers total earnings will be exceeded 1500 per day. The worker wages typically calculated at the end of the month are due to be paid on the 10th of the following month. The wage agreement reached on the 10th of September followed multiple rounds of disagreements between employers and trade unions with the workers advocating for better compensation. The new wage structure agreed upon by all stakeholders was seen as a critical step in improving the livelihoods of plantation workers who have long campaigned for fair wages. The revised wage system applies to workers in the tea and rubber industries, including those involved in tea growing, tea manufacturing, rubber cultivation and raw rubber processing. Under the current system, plantation workers receive a basic salary of 1000 rupees with an additional 40 rupees per kilo after reaching the target of 20 kilos of tea leaves. <laughs> Let's take a short commercial break. Market updates on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back. The Colombo Stock Exchange has seen a decline in performance today, despite the ASPI mating itself about 12,000 points. Both indices closed in the red today. However, the positive sentiment is not completely shaken. For more on today's trading sessions, we have with us Netmi Fernando from First Capital. The Colombo Bourse experienced a downturn during the trading session as investors booked profits, leading to a mixed sentiment among investors. The ASPI started the day on a bullish note and however, selling pressure emerged towards midday, particularly in the banking sector and blue chip stocks. Subsequently, the market turned red at 12,152, losing 19 points. The banking sector counters such as Sampath Bank and DFCC Bank, coupled with blue chip stocks, contributed negatively to the index during the day. Uh, on the positive note, uh, Agarapatana Plantations PLC witnessed a 9.8% price upside following its dividend announcement uh, that was given today. However, turnover was witnessed a significant upturn from the previous day and stood at LKR 2.1 billion on the back of three off board transactions despite the lower retail participation compared to previous sessions. This marked a 6% increase from the monthly average standing at LKR 2 billion. Furthermore, 29% of the overall turnover was contributed by the capital goods sector, whilst 37% of the turnover was jointly contributed by the diversified financials and banking sectors. Thank you.
The Central Bank of Sri Lanka held its weekly treasury bill auctions today and yields that have seen a depreciating trend have continued to fall. For more details, we have with us Demantha Matthews from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. So the government securities market has continued to see a, a downward trend in uh, interest rates. So this trend is continuing post uh, elections and is likely to continue into the future as well as the uncertainties uh, in the system gradually ease off. So today's uh, secondary market, uh, today's uh, government securities uh, bill auction was quite significant with uh, the treasury bills, all, all three uh, auction yields uh, coming down below the uh, coming down to 10% and below. So we see the one-year treasury bill at uh, a weighted average of 10%, while the six months and three months ending at 9.95% and 9.69%. So sizable uh, downward trend from last week and we, we saw significantly higher level of interest as well. Though the offered amount was uh, 85 billion, we saw bids coming in around 243 billion while uh, the central bank continued to accept the uh, offered amount uh, initially. So with this, uh, we believe that the central bank has raised the required amounts uh, while uh, maintaining a downward trajectory in interest rates. Thank you. Gold prices were subdued today as investors awaited the release of minutes from the Federal Reserve's latest policy meeting, hoping for insights into the central bank's interest rate trajectory. Spot gold was changed at $2,620.50 per ounce, having recently touched a more than two-week low in the previous session. This comes after prices reached a record high of $2,685.42 on the 26th of September, underscoring the volatility in the precious metal market. Meanwhile, the U.S. gold futures edged up by 0.1% to $2,639, reflecting a slight upward trend amid cautious trading. As investors closely monitor economic indicators and Fed policy signals, the market remains on edge, with many anticipating potential shifts that could influence gold's appeal as a safe haven asset. Let's keep an eye on how these developments unfold and their impact on gold prices in the coming days. Oil prices steadied in Asian trading today as traders weigh developments in the Middle East conflict against continued bearish expectations for demand. Brent crude futures rose 0.3% to $77.04 a barrel. U.S. West Texas intermediate futures rose 14 cents to $73.71 a barrel. Prices had plunged more than 4% in the previous session on a possible Hezbollah-Israel ceasefire. But markets remain wary of a potential Israeli attack on Iran's oil infrastructure. Structure. On the demand front, data showed U.S. crude oil stocks rose by nearly 11 million barrels last week, much more than analysts polled on Reuters had expected, according to market sources citing American Petroleum Institute figures yesterday. However, fuel stockpiles fell. The Sri Lankan rupee remains steady against the US dollar today in commercial banks, with both buying and selling rates holding firm as reported by Commercial Bank. This stability reflects a cautious yet positive outlook amid ongoing economic developments. Now let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee is performing against other global currencies. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back. Women Jaila Apartments have generated over 4.2 billion rupees in sales prior to the start of construction this year. This remarkable achievement by John Gill's properties underscores the strong demand and interest from both investors and home buyers. 
Viman Jaila is not just another residential project. It's a unique concept in suburban living, designed to harmonize modern conveniences with the serenity of nature, spanning six acres with 65% of the land dedicated to open spaces and amenities. Viman Jaila offers more than just apartments, with over 15 thoughtfully designed amenities including meditation courts, a kids play area, outdoor sports courts and cycling and walking paths. The project aims to create a holistic living experience, reflecting on the success of the project. Since its highly anticipated launch in September of 2023, Viman Jaila has quickly captured the attention of discerning home buyers and investors alike. With an outstanding 75% of units sold across the first two phases, the development continues to set a new benchmark for suburban living. This overwhelming demand speaks to the project's strengths and the trust in John Keel's properties. Sustainability is at the core of Viman Jaila, reflecting John Keel's property's commitment to eco-friendly living. Solar-powered homes, EV charging stations and abundant green spaces highlight the project's focus on energy efficiency and environmental responsibility. Its strategic location offers easy access to key amenities such as supermarkets, schools, hospitals and the highway, including the Colombo Port Access Road, making Viman the perfect blend of suburban charm and urban connectivity. In recognition of its resilience and commitment towards healthcare, Nauloka Hospital's PLC has emerged as a Merit Award winner in the hospital sector at the recently held National Business Excellence Awards 2024. The NBEA, a prestigious award ceremony organized by the National Chamber of Commerce of Sri Lanka, aims to recognize enterprises with demonstrable excellence in business while contributing to the economic progress of the country. Navaloka Hospital's PLC is the leading private healthcare service provider which offers a premium range of state-of-the-art diagnostic and treatment facilities. Equipped with a team of skilled medical professionals and the advanced treatment facilities, Navaloka Hospital has always maintained a legacy of professionalism coupled with years of experience in the medical field. The award also coincides with the Navaloka's latest milestone in the successful completion of 500 kidney transplant surgeries which was also achieved this year. The hospital was instrumental in pioneering kidney transplanting surgeries in the country with a team of medical professionals versatile in nephrology treatment. As authenticated by the Minister of Health, Navaloka Hospitals has been instrumental in performing 542 kidney transplants to date from 2012 to June this year. Furthermore, Navaloka Hospitals has come a long way in delivering tertiary healthcare services tailored to meet individual patient care needs. Facilitated with a designated ward equipped with three beds and specialized kidney transplant ICU facilities which were established in 2012 and a dedicated team of trained nursing and healthcare personnel, the Navaloka Kidney Transplant Unit bears testimony to plethora of services it has to offer for potential donors and patients diagnosed with renal failure. Established in 1985, Navaloka Hospitals has always played a proactive role in helping advance in medical research, sustainability and responsible patient care. Demo Healthcare, the healthcare arm of Demo, who is also the authorized partner for ZS in Sri Lanka, is proud to announce the installation of the groundbreaking ZS Kinovo 900 at Lanka Hospitals. This sophisticated visualization system elevates the hospital's neurosurgical capabilities, ushering in a new era of precision and efficiency. The ZS Kinovo 900 empowers surgical teams with exceptional real-time visualization. Surgeons, co-surgeons, assistants and residents can all benefit from high-resolution images displayed on dedicated screens, fostering seamless collaboration within the operating room. Additionally, 3D glasses provide unparalleled depth perception, allowing for a more effective understanding of neuroanatomy. A key feature of the ZS Kinovo 900 is a specialized robotic control system called Point Lock. This innovative technology enables surgeons to maintain focus on a specific area within the surgical field, even while maneuvering the microscope through a wide spherical arc. This ensures unwavering clarity throughout the procedure, minimizing the risk of errors during intricate maneuvers. The ZS Kinevo 900 goes beyond traditional surgical microscopes by offering a high-resolution 4K camera integrated with digital hybrid visualization. This technology facilitates heads-up surgery, freeing surgeons from the constraints of traditional eyepieces and enabling a more natural posture and greater freedom of movement during the procedure. The wealth of continuously available visual information is crucial for informed decision-making during surgery. As a result, surgeries can be performed successfully, leading to faster recovery times and quicker returns to normal life for patients. 
David Perry's Motor Company Private Limited said their innovative electric converted three-wheeler e-drive fleet has surpassed a milestone of 1 million kilometers traveled across Sri Lanka. This achievement marks a significant step in the company's efforts to contribute to cleaner and greener transportation options throughout the island. Launched one year ago as a part of DPMC's innovative initiative, eDrive is Sri Lanka's first electric converted three-wheeler taxi service. Originally introduced as a pioneering pilot program, eDrive offers not only an economical mode of transportation but also prioritizes passenger safety and comfort. The adoption of electric vehicles has led to reduced noise pollution and smoother rides due to minimize vibrations, enhancing the overall commuting experience. The fleet, comprising around 50 vehicles, operates in Colombo and Jaffna, with some three-wheelers rented out to various corporate clients. This initiative has also provided job opportunities opportunities for drivers while fostering a disciplined workforce. Before its launch, the e-drive was meticulously tested on all terrains in Sri Lanka by DPMC's Research and Development Division. These tests ensured the vehicle's reliability and performance in varying conditions, offering drivers and passengers a safe, comfortable, noise-free and eco-conscious travel experience. Reaching 1 million kilometers is a testament to their durability, efficiency and growing popularity of electric vehicles in Sri Lanka. UB Finance PLC has announced the appointments of Dilshan Rodrigo and Professor Ajanta Dharmasiri to its board of directors. Dilshan Rodrigo was appointed as director slash chief executive officer of Union Bank of Colombo PLC in August 2024. He brings over two decades of banking experience, having held senior positions across various sectors, including banking, insurance, investment banking, and apparel. He holds an MBA from Cranfield University, UK, and is also a fellow of both the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants and the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants UK. Professor Ajanta Dharmasiri, a leading paracademic with industry and academic presence, has a combination of being a chartered manager, chartered HR professional and a chartered electric engineer. He is acclaimed as a conference speaker, corporate trainer, strategy consultant, author and an academic. He is the first homegrown senior professor in the management of the Postgraduate Institute of Management, University of Sri Jayawardhana, Sri Lanka and was the director and chairman of the board of management of it. He became the first Sri Lankan to lead both the Chartered Management Institute Sri Lanka chapter and Chartered Institute of Personal Management. He is an adjunct professor at Price College of Business University of Oklahoma. Going in for a short commercial break, now we'll be right back with global updates. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Chinese stocks tumbled today alongside their Hong Kong peers as investors book profits after a blistering rally and as officials face to inspire confidence in stimulus plans intended to the review the economy. Benchmark indexes in China declined more than 5% by midday in a sharp reversal from the moves seen the day before, when markets returned from the week-long National Day holiday with a bang and scaled more than two-year highs. The Shanghai Composite Index fell 5.3% while the Blue Chip CSI 300 Index dropped 5.4%, both poised to snap a 10-day winning streak. The A-share market comprising stocks listed in Shanghai, Shenzhen and Beijing had a roller coaster ride on Tuesday, with turnover hitting a record $493.17 billion. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index similarly dropped 1.4%, though it remains one of the region's best performing markets this year, following its steepest rally in a generation over recent weeks. Wall Street's benchmarks finished up yesterday, recouping some of the previous session's losses as investors bought back into technology stocks and investors shifted their focus to upcoming inflation data and the start of the third quarter earnings season. Wall Street's main indexes finished higher on Tuesday as investors shifted their focus to upcoming inflation data and the start of third quarter earnings season. The Dow gained three-tenths of a percent. The S&P 500 added about 1 percent, and the Nasdaq climbed roughly 1.5 percent. High-growth stocks jumped, with shares of NVIDIA climbing more than 4 percent for their largest one-day percentage increase in a month. Apple, Tesla, and Meta platforms also closed higher. Other notable stock moves included PepsiCo, which gained about 2 percent after the snack maker trimmed its forecast for annual sales growth, but reported adjusted earnings per share above estimates. 
But U.S. listed shares of Chinese companies slid, with Alibaba Group, JD.com, and PDD Holdings all suffering losses. China's Ministry of Finance will issue yuan-dominated treasury bonds worth 8 billion yuan, or about 1.13 billion US dollars in Hong Kong. The issuance is the fifth of its kind this year following the fourth tranche of 9 billion yuan or about 1.28 billion US dollars that hit the market in mid-August. More specific arrangements will be announced by the Hong Kong Monetary Authority's Central Money Markets Unit. The Ministry of Finance plans to issue a total of 55 billion yuan or about 7.8 billion US dollars in yuan-denominated treasury bonds in six batches in Hong Kong this year as part of efforts to consolidate and enhance its status as one of the world's leading financial centers. And that's all from us here at the Nightly Business Report. Join us again tomorrow for more key updates across the business globe. I'm Sonia Mudal Naika. Thank you for watching. Good night.